Yo, it's your boy Logos, and today I'm going to react to Pearly being on Piers Morgan's show and apparently getting in some type of debate with the feminists about feminism, and apparently Pearly thinks women shouldn't be allowed to vote. It's funny, I haven't done a Pearly reaction in a few months, and my most watched video is actually from Pearly. One of her guests was saying that patriarchy is bad and matriarchy actually does exist, and it has been proven to be successful. And I picked that nonsense apart because it's just not true. The places that she will talk about matriarchy being real or working are within patriarchal countries. <laughs> and I knew that from the start, but just dismantling that nonsense was fun. So let's see what this going to be about and see if it's going to be some nonsense. Welcome back to Piers Morgan Uncensored. So Pearl Davis has racked up a legion of online followers and plenty of breathless newspaper coverage by sharing her incendiary views on modern feminism. The New York Post called her the female Andrew Tate. So she tapped into genuine female pushback to the excesses of wokery, or is she just an attention seeker? We'll find out in a moment. But first, let's take a look at the clip that sent her viral. A lot of people think I'm insane because I don't think women should vote. Everybody thinks I'm crazy for this opinion. If anything, this is probably my most extreme opinion. 90% of women have been on birth control. One out of three women has had an abortion. One out of three women has an STD. Uh, average body count is over five, so that your average wife has slept with over five people. 95% of women are not virgins on their wedding days. So I understand the complaint. Okay. Okay, that was a little weird. I don't know if that was the whole clip without part of it being clipped out of contest. Because what in the hell does all the stuff she got to mention about um, the STDs, if that's true, and all the other stuff regarding women have to do with their right to vote. And just because some women do that doesn't mean that has to deal with your voting or your political stances. But let's see. Who knows? It's Pierre Morgan. Well, Paul joined, uh, joins me now alongside political journalist Ava Santini. He was nodding furiously along there to everything she heard. <laughs> Right, Paul, you become you be called the female Andrew Tate. How do you plead? Well, I, I take it as a compliment. You know, I'm a fan of Andrew Tate. Of everything he says? Um, it depends what we're talking about. But overall, I think he's got a good message. I think he's good for young men. OK, look, you're talking about women predominantly, uh, which is why you've got this big following. And your view is that modern feminism is deeply flawed. I would argue a lot of your... Proposals like taking the vote away from women are deeply <laughs> regressive. Mm -hmm. Why would you want to remove just from yourself the right to vote? Well, um, what happened was I, I had the same view, right? Um, back when I started, I was like, why? I found out that only 5% of women wanted the right to vote. And I couldn't figure out, like, why would women not... No, it's true. It's well, true. At, the look it up. at the time. At the time. Because they've been conditioned by men to think that they shouldn't have a vote. I, I mean, that's what they say. But, you know, I started reading their writings, right? And what I found out was that the reason a lot of women advocated for it was because they believed it was the beginning of the breakdown of the family. You know, before you became one in marriage, 85% of people were married. And, you know, I, I hate to say it, but they were right. What has happened 100 years later? But what's that going to do with them having the vote? Well, it also goes back to responsibility. Um, again, men are 80 to 90 percent of the military. They run all of the infrastructures that make society run. So I just think if we want an equal say in society, then be equal. Do 50 percent of the hard jobs. Be 50 percent of the military. In the U.S., um, they're fined $250,000 if they are not, they don't join um, selective service, which is essentially the draft. Okay, but on, on so, specifically on the mm -hmm. vote, what would having the right to vote have to do with family cohesion, for example? Well, because, again, before, you weren't trying to divide a family. It was one family unit. You had one vote for the family. I mean, I, I don't think it's good for a family to have two votes. Ava, your mouth seems... And, but <clears throat> in the opposite direction, I would say more often than not, if you're married together, more often your political alignment matches up because eventually you're going to get to that point in that relationship where you're going to have those... I don't know, quote unquote, sensitive conversations. Me personally, I really don't have time to, to duck and dodge around. I'm just tell you straight up how I feel and you can take it or leave it. It is what it is. But that is a certain thing that people do have to get ready to talk about and not always comfortable for people. And sometimes, sadly, especially nowadays, if you have a different self opinion, you won't even get to the talking stage. <laughs> They'll just automatically block you or automatically delete your number or something else or just walk away. It's really, I don't know, I, I kind of disagree with her on that. And another reason I disagree with it about women should not vote is because 
there are like female candidates, women candidates that I do like a support. Like for example, Tosi Gabbard. She's a former veteran, well not former veteran. She is a veteran. She used to be at the Vinny uh, military. And she said some things when she was running in 2020 that I agree with in light. I wouldn't be upset with her running again. At least so we can have those conversations out in the ether that wasn't put out there before. Shoot, Tosi Gabbard put out um Kamala Harris from my memory about her doing all that shady mess up stuff. And he and she called her out on being corrupt and all the other stuff. And then somehow they try to make it about her being attacking a black woman or this that, and the other. Like they Tosi Gabbard is a candidate I will vote for. And I can't imagine a world where women can't vote, but somehow still get a female candidate. It just doesn't make sense. It's just dropped about. No, do you know what it's sort of like? Now, I no, know. it's just sort of a bit galaxy brain. I feel like you know the, the, the stats that you're putting down are perhaps correct in some universe. Which, which stats? But they just kind of don't really add up. I mean, just just to take you back to the mm -hmm. to, to the women's writings that you've allegedly read. I mean, at allegedly. The time, well, at the what time do you mean that, allegedly? At the time that you're talking about, mm -hmm. you know, women weren't really allowed to write. They weren't allowed to go to school. Yes, they were. Write. Yes, they so were. That, that's actually, incorrect. The first okay, female well, property. The first about. female property owner was in the 1600s. The idea that women couldn't work and couldn't. I'm so sorry. Sorry, but the that first be female, no, the first, no, no, the first female, the first female millionaire was in the uh, late 1800s. And was that inherited? So, so it, no, it wasn't. It was self-made. She wasn't. was, she, no, yes, it was. It was. Self -made. Yes, it and was. She never she inherited was just, that. Yes, it, she did not and what inherit law it. Permitted that. What? What law permitted that? Well, there was no law. I mean, there's always been okay, women anyway. that were influential let, let, let's in Let's get on to the, let's get on to the vote. So, what I don't understand is, you know, a part of your message. I've just, you know, I've researched you today. I, and hang on a minute. Okay. You know, your your big push is that you care about men. And you don't think that men are getting enough of a say? But well, I thanks care about to, women hang on, too. I haven't I made the point too, yet. Okay. Um, because of feminism, okay? What I wonder is when you start making calls out like repeal the 19th, women shouldn't be allowed to vote. Mm -hmm. How is that helping young men? Because these young men have women in their lives, they have mothers, they have sisters, they have teachers, and they turn around, they don't know how to act around. The self the first self-made millionaire from my understanding, and from looking up as you're talking, is Madam CJ Walker. And that was in 1919. Yeah, 1919. So I think Pearly said the late 1800s. So unless you know somebody or some information I'm not aware of or the internet's not aware of, that's not true. But I don't know. So far, it's not true. I'm going to just go back a little bit. Um, because of feminism, okay? What I wonder is when you start making calls out like repeal the 19th, women shouldn't be allowed to vote. Mm -hmm. How is that helping young men? Because these young men have women in their lives. They have mothers, they have sisters, they have teachers. And they turn around, they don't know how to act around women because you're giving them license to be misogynistic. I, I wouldn't call it misogynistic. I say be equal. So again, I men do all of the- Well saying. then, okay, I'd love for the feminists, please apply for the oil rigs. Please go do the hard jobs in society. What they're open, they're work, hiring, though? because I don't equate for, I, I don't think men or women are equal until we do the right. equal work. So no, no, listen, listen, go, go apply to be on the oil rigs, go do, go be a plumber, go be electrician, go be on the front lines of the military, and then we should have equal rights. But until feminists... She, I understand what she's trying to say, but she is saying it terribly. She is saying it absolutely awfully what what is she what i think she's trying to say is that if we believe in the way where we all think like men or women are equal in terms of their value in life i believe that's true like killing women just because they're women is of course evil or wrong and messed up but you can't be upset about men especially you know the gender pay gap saying that men work more or earn more money on average compared to women and that's some type of evidence of the patriarchy holding women back or some type of I don't know, just oppressive system that's holding women back. Then you could come up with the argument, okay, well, if women want to be paid as much as men, then do these tough, dangerous jobs. Like what she's saying, be on the oil rigs, go up on the skyscrapers, do crazy, in the heat, dangerous, life on the line work like that, and you will make that money. But for the most part, women don't want to do that. I think that's what she's trying to say, but... Since the whole con start the whole conversation started with voting, it just all seems like a mess. It just seems like a flat out mess because she's not tying the shit together. And she 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 bringing in fragments that kinda made sense, but she's not weaving no threads together. We can actually follow what she's saying. Are willing to do that. 
I don't believe we should have the freedom without the responsibility. Okay, well, I don't think that I'm physically built for that. You might be, but I'm absolutely that, not. You, no, but you, wow. you said you were wow. a volleyball. Wow, wow. You said you were a volleyball player, and so you've got more strength than I do. I don't think but that I, don't I have can more do those strength, I don't have more strength than the average man. I'm not going to take your right away to I don't do have, it. Uh, I don't have more strength than the average man, but my... Again, it goes back to go be a plumber. You want to be equal, go be you equal. Also, you, also, you also, but you don't want, you want divorce to be made illegal. Yes. Why? Yes, because I don't think what we have today is really marriage. What is marriage? It's for better or for worse, for richer or for poor, in sickness and in health, till death do us part. That's what marriage is supposed to be. But feminists have ruined marriage for the people that actually believe in marriage. How? When there's a 50% divorce rate, and the average marriage is Why is that all down to years. the women, though? I, I, I didn't say that it was all down to the women. So why well, feminists what I, what I, you're, You asked why I want divorce to be banned. Yeah. Can, I, can I finish yeah. that first? So I'm saying, you know, the people that believe in divorce, go be in long-term relationships. Leave marriage for the people that actually believe in for better or for worse, for richer or for poor, in sickness and in health, till death do us part. You can, you can say that, and I agree with that, because, you know, marriage is supposed to be till death do us part. But thinking that you should just have divorces be allowed is crazy. It's just insane to me. You can't just take away people's right to walk away if they want to. What we should do is change the incentives in such a way that there is no incentives at all to, to give a divorce. Like, for example, in certain cases where the man or the woman, if she makes more money or she has more assets, the other person is living off of them. Men who can't see their children after getting divorced. Like, the, like those type of courts, child custody courts, that should get refined. You can refine different aspects around divorce. That way, people who do get divorced don't get screwed out of it. And that way, men, young men, can see divorce, I'm sorry, see marriage as a more viable option. Because I know from watching some of her stuff in the past and other people's stuff in the past, that a lot of men now really don't believe in marriage because of how messed up it is when it comes to divorce and stuff like that. And I think that's what she's trying to get at. But like I said earlier with the whole voting thing, it's just the approach and the way that she's doing it, it just ain't working out. It's just simply not. I understand what she's trying to say about divorces and the, the statistics about women getting divorced more than men and such and so forth. And I think there is like some truth in that and there's ways to fix the system. That way men don't have to be worried or scared about getting married to women because they're afraid of getting their kids taken away or losing their assets or wealth or anything like that. That stuff should be refined and looked at. But saying that people shouldn't just be allowed to get a divorce, that's just insane. It's insane to me. The sanctity of marriage also rely on the woman being a virgin, so you wouldn't be able to get married. I, what do you what do you mean? Well, you've spoken quite openly there's... about how you're not a virgin. And so if you want to preserve that sanctity of marriage, I then, think, you know, you know I, and I, wish, I just think that you're and... upholding standards that you don't I, actually I, live I, by. You know, and that's a fair, that's a fair <laughs> complaint. I wish I was. But, you know, we can't go back. I don't know what you want me to say. No, but I just don't think it's 80... fair that you get to be here and you get to be paid for your views and you're uh -huh. telling other women that they shouldn't be allowed to. I, I think... I, what you, what is the, hang on, hang on, hang on. OK, is, let me... Do, if, I, if I may... <laughs> some say jump in. Um, isn't the whole point of being a feminist, though, that women are entitled to have their own views? Absolutely. And so I... she's perfectly entitled to her views. Yeah, but you can't... You might not like but them. But I'm here to challenge but Isn't she it? exercising her right as a... Are you a feminist? No, I am not. Really? <laughs> no, you know, I wouldn't. Don't go that far. You don't want to be a feminist? <laughs> no, because I think if feminists really believed in equality, but you guys don't, I would love for you, there is an oil rig hiring. <laughs> there is an engineer. I would actually firm love hiring. to see Ava Santino I, on no, oil rig. No, seriously, always. seriously. Uh, there is a, a building being built next to my building. Go do it, feminists. But, go but, do it. And me, but, I'm doing the same job that I'm get, doing right when now. When you find the man you if Early could say this stuff with, you know, proper setup, proper lead up, then what she's saying would make a lot more sense. Or, for example, if the woman that she's debating against says something like, man, got it easy or something crazy like that, then she could hop in. Well, OK, if it's so easy to be a man, go do these tough jobs. Go be a construction worker. Go work on the oil rigs. Go work 12 hours, 15 hours, 16 hours over and over again. Go and do that stuff. Go in the military and carry, what, 60, 90 pound packs and think it's easy to be a man. That would have been a good retort if she said something crazy. But it just, it seems like so far that Pearlie is going for sound bites. 
not like a actual conversation back and forth. That's what it feels like to me. You want to get married to? Are you saying you will literally, you will be with that man whatever happens for the rest of your life? Yes, for for the vows that we're supposed to live. By. How do you know you can keep them? I I mean, look it. I think it's a choice. And that's the thing, like, women are so willing to leave marriages because they're not happy. This is not about happiness. The most important thing is the children. And the problem is we have a modern society where it's me, 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 my feelings, leave when I feel like it, instead of doing what's best for the kids. Hey, but I've got to say, it's a little bit listening to Andrew Tate, where some of it I really don't agree with. <laughs> I don't agree with the vote stuff. When I hear things like that, I think there'll be a lot of people, especially yeah. older generation women, perhaps, who think, you know what? She's got a point. You don't gotta be older. Unless the guy is abusing you mentally, physically, emotionally, and the children, or he just leaving y'all out to dry, stuff like that, there's, I really can't imagine a reason why you should leave your husband, especially when you have kids. So for the most part, I do agree with Pearly. It's up in extreme cases like abuse. Of course, you should get the hell out, protect yourself, protect the children, protect the future. And don't let them grow up in that traumatic environment. If the husband really cared about the children and the family and the marriage, he wouldn't be being on his wife. He wouldn't be putting his kids and the person he's supposed to care about through that stuff. Well, I mean, I believe in agency. So I think that if a woman is going to look after her children in divorce, that's absolutely fine. I also believe in your right to speak your mind about it. What I don't understand... I'd, I'd like to what say, I don't even understand. before the 1920s, you know I mean? women could speak openly. This idea that, like, women couldn't talk the last 500 years. There have been women I throughout know, the history... I know, the American state education been, system has failed been, been, has, before, has and it's been, failing has been, There have been women throughout history that have read, written, and been very influential in society. Okay. So this idea, like, women could never do, do it. Do you don't know what I, what I don't understand, though, is when it gets spiteful, okay? Because you put down a few arguments that I think are perfectly... Like, you know, they're kind of evangelical and they're Christian, but those are your right to say it. What I don't understand is when it kind of seeps into this sort of... You call women fat, you say that they shouldn't have are abortions. They you say that they, they have fat? STDs. <laughs> you know, I I'm, mean, the question is, are they fat, no, yes I, or no? I, I the average American judgment. woman is 170 pounds. That's, that pounds. That's objectively overwhelming. I mean, let's be honest. We know... <laughs> We now celebrate morbid obesity but, as, as some kind of body positive thing, and it is complete <laughs> nonsense. So, actually, that is absolutely true. That is absolutely true. Like, her call <laughs> women rails and stuff, of course, that stuff is messed up, but the whole idea of body positivity and being obese and overweight is cool and fine, and you'll have no health issues that's a lie. You're not healthy. And, like I did in previous videos, just because you can do some yoga. <laughs> That's like me, you're healthy. Come on, hey, come on, get off your ass and stop doing that yoga and, and run the mouth straight and then tell me you're healthy. Stop. On that point again, there's a bit of truth in And this that. is the problem, this is the problem. How have we come to celebrate morbid obesity as body positive? <laughs> well, it's watched, nonsense. We're not talking about morbid obesity. I was actually watching your podcast earlier and you, sp you spoke to someone who was, I, I would say, probably a size 12 and you called her it, fat, a beast and a divorcee. She was fat, obese and a divorcee. She wasn't. I mean, like, I don't know what to say. This is the thing, women, we don't want to live in reality. We don't want to say things that are true. Was she fat? Yes. Was she a divorcee? Yes. These things are just objective Facts. Okay, I'm going to have to objectively... And, and she insulted me first. They always... I'm going to have to objectively end the debate, but it was an interesting conversation. I thought we should get you two back together <laughs> as a matter of urgency. Uh, thank you very much, Pearl. Thank you, Ava. Interesting conversation. Overall, if it was, you know, like an hour-long thing where I was just going back and forth, I would hope that Pearly would, you know, actually construct arguments that make sense. And so, you know, saying these stuff that really doesn't connect together and I got to like piece together what she's trying to say from other information that I've known or seen. It just overall doesn't make her look good because it just looked like a mess. And the other girl, the other woman, she didn't really have to do much. She just had to come in with some quips, but probably made herself stumble more than the girl did, in my opinion. But she did get her about the whole virgin thing and stuff like that. But when it came to like the points and stuff, probably herself was messing herself up. There was grains of truth throughout it, but like I said over and over again, it was hard to connect it all together because it seemed like Kurt Pearly couldn't either. I don't know. Hopefully I do another interview or maybe she'll come on Pearly's uh, podcast, but I doubt it because it clearly let that girl didn't like her and they'll just end up being another guest where they end up going back and forth 
and the guests would get upset. They'll throw some underhanded insults, and here we go. It's all tension over a conversation the whole time. I don't know. That's just what I've seen from previous episodes, but that's not every episode, apparently. But let me know what you think in the comments down below. Like, share, and subscribe. It's your boy Logos, and I'll see you next time. Peace.